the Emory Eagles versus the Claremont Mudscripts Athenas. Please welcome the officials for tonight's contest. The referee is Reina Fonseca. Assistant referees are Salvador Reyes and Rolf Bennett. The fourth official is Matt Nye. And now let's make the teams. First up for the visiting Athenas, beginning with the non-starters. Sarah Kathleen Uland, Nicole Oberlag, Mia Duranzik, Ava Mickelvane, Vita Hassan, Marissa Mestechella, Arthi Namaspayam, Elizabeth Ulin, Lizzie Iwicki, Sophia Dresner, Sophia Devon, Stella Call, and Athena Manthuli. And now the starters for the Athenas. In goal, number zero, Cam Hansen. A midfielder, number three, Lauren Jeans. A forward, number four, Sarah Tocher. A defender, number five, Taylor Arakaki. A midfielder, number seven, Rianne Holman. A forward, number nine, Kira Fabake. A midfielder, number 12, Katrina Ostrom. A defender, number 18, Grace Pratt. A midfielder, number 25, Gabby Klaus. A defender, number 26, Grayson Buenconsejo. A defender, number 30, Sam Ree. Head coach for Claremont is Jennifer Clark. She is assisted by Natalie Turner Wyatt. And now the non starters for Emory Emma Platt. Sydney Rosenkratz, Natalie Clark, Malika Mohammadi, Kelly Walsh, Brooke Hilka, Lily Dresner, Lauren Mahoney, Morgan Brandewee, Ariel Williamson, Yasmin Toy, Kylie Hall, and Sab Agnew. And now the starters for Emory. In goal, number one, Haley Platt. Midfielder, number three, Lauren Collage. A defender, number seven, Jordan Fitzgerald. A forward, number 10, Caroline Kolsky. Midfielder, number 15, Lindsay Bresco. A defender, number 16, Paige Santi. A defender, number 22, Caroline Moore. A defender, number 23, Peyton Robertson. Midfielder, number 24, Sam Hilsey. A forward, number 26, Shivani Beal and a forward number 30, Aubrey Blanchard. Head coach for Emory is Sue Patberg. She is assisted by Valerie O'Brien and Mike Wensler. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your... Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats to honor America and those who support our freedom. Please join in the singing of our national anthem.
Back at William Rowland Stadium, Randy Rosenblum with Banderas here. How are Alan you? Turn in the good NCAA himself. promote good Doing sportsmanship well. by That's student Antonio athletes, coaches, Welch. and fans. We it's Emory from Atlanta, Georgia, against Claremont Mud Scripps. The winner gets Cal Lutheran tomorrow night at seven o'clock for the right to go to the Sweet 16. A lot at stake here. This should be very exciting. Yeah, both teams are coming in in really good form, so I'm I'm excited to see what both teams bring out. Let's talk about the keepers first for Emory. Haley Pratt's had a great year. Yeah, she's done really well in goal. She has, um, she's <laughs> very outstanding keeping. To yeah. say the least. Good numbers for her. And Cam Hampson is going to get the start. There was some doubt. She's been injured a lot. She is back. She's uh, gone seven and two as the starter for Claremont Mud Scripps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So both teams have really good goalkeepers. <laughs> That'll be a treat. Maybe a low scoring game. Yeah, it figures to be mighty low scoring. Neither one of these teams surrender a lot of goals, do they? No, no, no. Uh, Claremont only giving up nine goals, and. Emory, I believe, has around 12. If so. anyone's going to pull the trigger for the visitors from Georgia at Emory, it is Natalie Clark. She has scored a lot of goals this year. I'm looking down at her number. She scored nine this year. Yeah, really good form. And they're going to need that tonight if they want to pull out the win and potentially play the Regals tomorrow. On the other side, Ryan Holman has had great success over the last two years for CMS. Good numbers, eight goals and seven assists. That is really good. And... <laughs> Typically, you just don't see that that well-roundedness. Either you're a goal scorer or a passer, but to be both, it's a threat. The weather's changed. There's no wind. It was a very windy day. It was warm here. It's going to cool off tonight. Temperatures are going to dip into the 50s. Will that make a difference when it's chilly out there? Or are these players just so excited to be in the NCAA tournament? I don't think that will make too much of a difference. I mean, if you're coming off the bench, you'll be a little bit cold. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, once you get in the game, you start getting a rhythm, you'll be fine. And, Tony, you play in goal. What should we look for with these keepers? You play in goal for CLU here at Cal Lutheran. Yep. What's going through their minds? We saw in the first game earlier some, some struggles earlier from the young lady from Santa Cruz, giving up some easy shots that went through. What do you expect from these keepers early on? Um, realistically, you kind of just want to build, like, some confidence, maybe an easier save or two. So, I mean, if they can do that, I'm sure it will transition into the game very well. We're underway. Emory in the white. The dark uniforms belong to Claremont Mud Scripps. CMS is 10-4-3 this year. On the other side, Emory 13-4 and on a six-win streak. They won seven, six in a row. Out of those six, five of the six have been shut out. So they're playing great defensively. Yep. It's great soccer. Number nine is Favica, one of the leaders, a senior leader. We'll watch her. Favica is fast and certainly can break down a defense. Three goals and three assists for Favica this year. One thing about CMS, uh, after they were not invited to the Skyac tournament, they thought their season was over. So they're just happy to be here. And we'll see how they perform. In dark. I think Lauren that jeans, number three, given off to number five, Taylor Iraqi. And we'll see how they perform after getting that news that they were going to the NCAA tournament as an at-large. Yeah, their strength of schedule is really good. They played Pomona twice, which is ranked, is ranked, I think, eighth right now. And it's, I mean, they played the Regals twice. They beat them once and tied once. So, I mean, overall, their record looked pretty good for the hard teams that they played. Well, it's going to be a difficult task for them tonight against this Emory College Eagle team that's come from Atlanta, Georgia, to get six straight wins, five of those shutouts. Just one goal surrendered in six matches. Pretty crazy. It is crazy numbers. Looks like we're going to have our first opportunity from the corner. Or is it going to be a throw-in? It looks like the throw-in. Here's a chance for Claremont's Mud Scripps. Shot, right. score! Oh, wow. Early goal for the Athenas. First time shot off the volley. 
Emery was unable to clear it, and Claremont just capitalizes on it. And that was a really good strike, and nothing that the keeper could do on that one. So a great start. For CMS, we saw that from Cal Lutheran earlier tonight. They got off quickly. Shot right on goal. Taken by Hilsey and easily played by Cam Hampson. So a quick strike and a goal for the Athenas. And just like the Cal Lutheran game, first couple minutes, quick goal. CMS right now forcing the action. Athena's trying to get another one early. Played out of there by Samantha Hilsey. And one thing to note, too, Claremont is actually really good at scoring within the first 15 minutes. They actually have uh, about five goals, and they've got four wins off of it every time they score within the first 15 minutes. Emery on the attack. That one's wide. So both teams having opportunities early. This game's a bit more open compared yep, to the, certainly is. the Regals game. I was open for one side early there. Yeah. First 12 minutes of that match. Cal Lutheran had three goals up on the scoreboard. Sprint to the near side. Should be controlled by this team from Emory. See if they can capitalize. Eagles again 13 and 4. Gonna have our first corner kick. Kylie Hall doing the honors. A little bit too strong with that one. It's gonna go all the way to the far side. The way Emery set up on that corner kick was kind of interesting. They had four players behind the goalkeeper of Claremont. Early and on, Taylor Arakaki has been very active for this team from Claremont Mud Scripps. He's uh, been a very energetic performer. Emery with a chance, a shot and a goal. So Emery is countered. Bresco has scored. Lindsey Bresco. Yeah, on this shot, it was just a lucky, fortunate bounce, and she was able to get it on her left foot and finished it. It was a really good shot. Keeper had no chance. Yeah. Hard post hit the side netting. Well struck. Yeah, Cam really never did have a shot to get to that one. Cam Hampson, junior keeper with good size at 5'11", but she couldn't stretch for that one. And just like that, we're tied. Here comes Claremont trying to answer again. Oh, that one nearly was in for Favica. Favica is one of the leaders, outspoken performer. She was one of the players that was mightily surprised when CMS was invited into the tournament. Sky's been pretty good. Yeah. We got three teams in it, so I mean to say the least, it's a very, very talented, um, very talented group. With Claremont, Pomona, and the Regals as well. Sue Patberg has to be happy about that counter goal to tie it up. Sue Patberg is in her 26th year. National Coach of the Year in 2012. And Emory was the national runner-up and nearly won the national championship. Finishing second in the tournament. CMS is coached by Jennifer Clark in her third year. 
And Marie in the white. Ball given up. Throw in for Claremont. Yep. Mishap in the back. Well, here we are. Less than seven minutes into the fray, and we have a goal apiece. Good throw in there from Lindsey Mahoney. But it will belong to Emery. And a goal kick. And we Pratt showing off her leg. Much like the game earlier, it's still a little bit messy. No one's really settled down yet. Takes a little time, especially with the nerves running high. Yeah. A lot at stake here. When you go home. Excellent defense by the Eagles. Denying the Athenas to this point. Stopping that run. Once again, it's Haley Pratt to do the honors. Pratt's a senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. 13-3 and three is the starter this year. So a rare goal surrendered by Emory College early, but they're able to get it back. Expected a low-scoring game, and early on, a goal apiece. Again, we haven't played 10 minutes yet. So much for a low-scoring game, right? Yep. Cleared by Bell of Emory. Again, these are two teams that are not familiar with one another. They you can study and do all the work, but once you get on the field, sometimes it's difficult to adjust to different styles. That's a great ball played in. It really is. Run out, but again, Emory able to get back defensively. You get the sense, even though it opened up with both sides getting one pass the keepers, that goals will be at a premium tonight. Pretty good ball movement there by Claremont Mud Scripps and a good feed. She tried to hit that first time, tried to get it over the keeper, but just hit it. Good effort there by Peyton Robertson defensively and he's able to slow down the progress of CMS. It's an early goal for the Athenas, but the Eagles came right back to notch one of their own. That's a good sign too that you're able to answer that quickly get the equalizer mm -hmm. yeah because that helps with the nerves because if you're down I mean it could <laughs> take a toll on you Tina's looking for a shot Emery looking to counter that's a slick move by Favica Favica is talented with the ball number nine but uh didn't have enough behind that shot. Made it easy for Pratt. She tried to play Gabby Claus, but she stopped her run, which allowed the keeper to just pick it up fairly easily. Pretty good punt. Chance for Emery. Bell run off the ball. From the corner, it's going to be coming in. 
Peyton Robertson will do the honors. Peyton Robertson's one of the leaders, a freshman out of Dallas, Texas. He's had a couple game winners this year. Very physical defender. That's beautiful. And headed out of there. That was dangerous. Yeah, that's ideally where you want to put the ball in corners because it allows your big players to get ahead on it really close to goal. And typically when you get ahead on it that close, it keeper has little to no chance in saving it. That really was a terrific job by the Athenas to, to slow the progress down there offensively. We do have a foul. It's a dangerous spot for a free kick. Yeah, Athena's in the attacking zone with an opportunity. Now the Eagles have an opportunity here. Here's an opening shot deflected over the cage. And again, it was number 15, Bresco, that had the chance. That was smart. They caught Claremont Mudsquid slipping, and they were able to just get a clean shot off. It was just her and the keeper. She might have been able to take a touch or two, but decided to hit it first after the second touch. But still, though, it was a smart play. I don't know if Bresco had scored. I don't have her down for any goals this year. She's already got one, and she nearly had a second. Mm-hmm. That would have been a memorable moment. I'm sure the first one was mighty fine for her. Like 23, Peyton Robertson on that back line for Emery. Very solid, as is Fitzgerald, Jordan Fitzgerald. Emery's starting to force the action a little bit more. Yeah. Claremont is doing really well attacking the ball defensively. They're not allowing Emery to get very much space when they are on the ball. They try to get numbers to try to make them make an arid pass, and it's worked so far. Number 10, Caroline Kolsky. Leads uh, the Eagles in white and shot attempts. Let's see if they can get her isolated. But here comes CMS back the other way. Pretty good ball control there from Gabby Klaus. Your turnover there. Got to be careful. This could be dangerous. Yep. There's a chance. There's Robertson kicking it away from the goal. For the time being, denying Claremont Mud scripts. She's wide open on the right side, getting a cross off. There is a near cross. Didn't quite get there. That one's uh, over the cage. She wasn't able to get it high enough, but she had someone in the back post that. If she got a touch on it, could have been in because Emily or Haley Pratt, the keeper for Emery, was on the near side. A tap in on the back post could have been possible. Well, Haley's been fairly busy kicking so far tonight. Showcasing that leg. It's a line drive kick. Not quite the distance that she's had in the past. And moving forward are the Athenas. Number seven is a definite threat. Ryan Holman, we talked about her with eight goals and seven assists this year for the red clad Athenas. But here comes Emory College trying to force the action and get the lead. Again, Emory's 13 and four, riding a six game winning streak. Locked out on top there in front. Nicely done by CMS's Grace Pratt. Both teams still have a lot of energy, which is kind of surprising at this point. No one's really been able to settle the game properly. Memory has a little bit more control, but the amount of pressure that Claremont's putting on them is it's weighing heavy on them. They're losing the ball quite a bit in the middle. Pretty good move there. Chance to advance it. Really 
really not much to choose between these two sides, is there? Not yet. Another long ball. Well handled by Pratt. Tocher tried from the side and was denied again by Pratt. Sarah Tocher was the one that sent it in on goal. Twenty-seven fifty-five to play in the half, and again, the college game. It's official. That clock, boy. That's a daring move by the keeper. Cam Hansen got lucky to get a touch on that one. Yeah, but Cam was rolling the dice, wasn't you? Yeah. Now you play that position. Mm -hmm. Do you like that move, or is that a little bit too daring? I mean, personally, I would have stood in, but I mean, every keeper has a different style of play. So, and she seems to come off her line quite a bit. So. Fitzgerald with the throw in. They will retain possession. The Eagles. Try it again. With that offensive explosion early, there's a chance for Emery. Trying to close in on that Athena goal. And they're moving it a little bit better here in this sequence. Yeah, Ooh, that was a nice move. This is your first opportunity to watch Emory, and I know you've seen some of the players in the past from Claremont Mud script since they play in the Skyac. Yeah, yeah. Occasionally, um, we get a game off, you know, and we're able to see the, the Regals play, and I was able to watch the Claremont in, the, in the, the Athena's game, and it was pretty good. Both right. sides are played pretty well, but Claremont was able to come out top in that game. Claremont Mud Scripps able to get the header off the Peyton Robertson corner kick. Bad clearance. Shot, save. Well done. Boy, that was a little dicey, but a good move by Cam Hampson to cover. Yeah, the looking clearance. shot by Shavana Bell. The clearance wasn't very, wasn't the best, and she kind of shanked it, and it went towards the top of the 18. Easy shot, but controlled well by the keeper. I like the passing of Emery. They're moving the ball. It's like a hot potato. That's what you want to do. And CMS is a very talented team. Here's Bresco, who has the goal. Oh. The backside defender slipped on that one. Good attempt there, though. They're very fluid with that attack. Trying to get the ball to the forward coming up, which is Aubrey Blanchard, but it was just wide of her. Forcing the action again are the Eagles out in front. This is dangerous. Cleared by CMS. That was an opportunity for Emory. Now they're going to have to retool their offense. 24-15 left. First half. 1-1 one, one draw. Emory seems to be settling a little bit more. Then, um, yeah, they're Claremont. pressing the action, aren't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. Cam is uh, doing a lot of work. Cam Hampson. A punt out near the 50-yard line here at William Rowland Stadium. Racing back to get it is Fitzgerald of Emory. There's Bresco, who's been active. Blanchard couldn't handle it. Here comes CMS back the other way, but Bresco able to deny them a, a counter. One 
one tie. Of course, this next goal would be huge for either side. Both teams were filling each other out, and you could tell like the game's starting to settle a little bit more. Emory with a little bit more of the offensive action, but Claremont's pushing back. And they've held up pretty well defensively. So we'll see who can come up top first and get that second goal. Emory College. In the tournament field, there's 64 teams, much like the old NCAA basketball tournament. The ladies have a 64-team affair. Athena's haven't had it on goal for a while. No. They're making small pushes, but nothing's really come out of it. So we'll see if they can connect a few more passes on in the front half of the field and maybe get a shot or two off. Again, Emery trying to move forward and can't. Here's a chance on a counter. CMS has numbers. See if they can take advantage. Emory did a nice job getting back. Willie Dressner. That went out in front, tipped away beautifully by Fitzgerald. Yeah, Claremont did a really good job on that play. They were breaking the press by doing one or two touch passing. And here comes Emory on the other side. He'll Stop. see, and she can't thread the needle. See if the Athenas can organize. Just above 21 minutes to play in a even first half. First round of the NCAA Division III tournament. Claremont's defense has done a pretty good job of reading the the plays coming forward, or the ball's coming forward towards the forwards. And just like that one, but Emery's able to get the lucky bounce. There's a Buen with the, the clearance. But Emery retains possession. Emery holding it in for the time being. Send it back out. And then they try to force the action. Their ball control from the midfield's been pretty good. But CMS is a very aggressive, defensive-minded team. Here's a chance for Favica. Always got to watch number nine in the dark uniform. She's a threat. Good mark there. That was beautifully done by Lauren Jeans because of her beautiful defense. Going to be brought in by CMS. Doing the honors is Samantha Ree. I like what Fabica has been able to do on this left side. When she gets the ball, she looks dangerous, and she's starting to ignite the attack for Claremont. So we'll see if she can do anything more. 1-1 one, one draw. Here's a chance. Great opportunity. Holman got it. No, just missed Oh, she got the opportunity and just went wide with it. I thought she was going to score. She tried to sneak it in near post. She had the back post open, but there was a defender on her right side, which kind of forced her to shoot it near post. But overall, it's a pretty good opportunity. She got the opportunity and got a player there that's so dynamic, so gifted in scoring, and she just sent it wide. It did look like Haley Pratt had it covered, though. So... But that's as well as you can construct it if you're CMS, get one of your top scorers. She has eight goals, had ten goals last year, did Holman, in a position to strike like that. Yeah. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to capitalize on that one and add to her total this year. Still even at one. Looked like CMS was about to get the lead. See what Emery can do. This game's been 
been pretty back and forth from the start. And I don't know, I thought maybe the, the energy would die down a little bit and teams would settle down, but they're going after each other. Both teams showing that they want to win. Well, you would think they'd have energy, though, in an NCAA tournament <laughs> match, though, don't you? Yeah, but typically the game kind of slows down after a little bit once you get a feel for each other, but both sides are just they're being relentless. Yeah, it's they really are. Watch. It's fun to watch. Yeah, it is. It's back and forth. Fast break soccer. Yeah. It's always the best to watch. Really, you, you don't see any one player hold on to it very long, do you? It, it's the movement very quickly. No one's dribbling around a lot. Yeah, both sides have done very well to do one, two, one or two touch passing, which can break defenses down. And it's tough because the defenses are so good. You see, that's great work there by Arakaki again, number five. She's a little pest for CMS. Yeah, she's doing very well on that side, and, you know, she's holding it down right now. Those are the kind of players that you just don't like. To, you know, she's from Hawaii. She's got an unbelievable motor, and she's just all over you all the time. Taylor... You hate to go against them, but you love, you love when they're on your team. Yeah, yeah. Energy plus. Yeah. The energy, it, believe it or not, it goes on to the team. Like, you make a defensive play, and it, it, it fills the team. It's kind of cool. But a nice double header today when you throw the football game in. As Cal Lutheran won a football game here on senior day today earlier. 59-20 over Whittier. This has been a triple header on this field. <laughs> back to back to back. Peyton Robertson again with a corner. She's very good at centering these up. Ooh, that was dangerous. And it's Cam good. Hampson got on that one and used the head to get it out of there. Well done to clear it off her line. It's pretty good. You can appreciate that as a keeper. Yeah, never easy coming out like that, but Blocked out in front. See if any team can gain momentum before we go to an intermission period, which is about 16 minutes away. Eddie Rosenblum with Antonio Welch. Very fine goalkeeper here at Cal Lutheran. He had some injury woes this year, huh? Yeah. I tore my meniscus over the over the spring, got surgery over the summer. There's a chance on the cross. Ooh, that was dangerous. It was on the ground, and it was in a position where you could strike, but the Eagles couldn't quite get to the ball. That's as good a chance as they've had in a while. Tough to break down these defenses. It's a fun watch, though, because... What we talked about earlier, how it's going back and forth and each team getting an opportunity. Both teams have just done a good job defensively holding each other off. And ooh, that's a good ball. See if she can handle it. Oh, ball was it a little bit. That was dangerous. The light might have played a little bit of a factor in that one. She might have lost it in the light. And that can happen in these night matches. Yeah. It's happened to me a few times, too. No, you're impregnable. Nothing happens to you. <laughs> You'll be folklore by the end of the night. <laughs> you build up your reputation. One again, centered, but beautifully moved out of there by Lauren Jeans. CMS not allowing further progress or any damage. Again, look at the ball movement. One, two, touch. Yep, one touch, and it's gone and blocked. That's kind of what you have to do, too, because Claremont's doing a really good job of putting numbers on the ball. And they're doing they're doing really well high pressing, and so it it's a must if you want to break down this defense. There's, one or two touch passing. Here's Holman to throw it in. I thought she was going to score on that other shot down the other way. And didn't quite get one to fall. But Holman's had some chances. You can see she's she's huffing and puffing. Number seven's worked hard tonight. Yeah, she's got a motor. That's what's impressed you so far, right? How hard both teams are working? Yeah. Normally, like I was telling you earlier, the, the game kind of settles down a little bit, but both sides are fighting really hard. It's a really gritty match. 
And it's back and forth. You know, for a while there, it looked like Emory had most of the chances. Last few minutes, uh, CMS has been able to come forward with some opportunities. Still leaving it at one apiece. 13 minutes to play before the break. Got a feeling we're going to have a 90-minute match at least tonight. We might, uh, uh, we won't talk about any extra sessions here, but <laughs> these teams are apparently very, very evenly matched. First round of the NCAA tournament. Both on paper and in game right now. Yeah. Look at their stats. You, you were lining up all the stats, and you thought it would be pretty close. Yeah, I did. Both sides have done really well, both defensively and offensively. Emory has like a slight advantage offensively. They have like a plus 32 goal differential on the season. Mm -hmm. And Claremont has a plus 25. Not too far off. That's good movement. That's great dribbling from Samantha Ree. Setting up Hassan. Tocher shot wide right. That was well designed by the Athenas, and Sarah Tocher had a chance. She's a four-year player, and that was a good he had a shot. great opportunity. That was a good-looking shot. You know, for a second, I thought she'd put another goal on for Claremont, but just a tad bit wide. Got the senior forward from Seattle, Washington, Sarah Tocher. Very fast, a playmaker. Target forward. Claremont Mud Scripps suddenly starting to control the match a little bit. Although we're still even at one apiece. Fitzgerald back the other way. Fitzgerald with a quick flick and she got it back. That was read very well. Defenses are playing terrific soccer. Remember, each side got a quick goal and been shut down defense since. Counter like this can be dangerous as you catch people out of place. Hassan with it. She's trying to look for some help, but didn't have anything. Most Vita Hassan. She did well to win the corner, though. She so. really did. Sophia Drenzer about to take the corner right now. It's 28 for Claremont. Just a freshman. We've seen a lot of freshmen in this tournament, which bodes well for all the teams that were here. And the Dresner corner. All four teams that we've seen today, their freshmen have played a big role in their season, and they're contributing very well, which I think adds to the success of all four teams that we've seen today. Well, I guess you you got to build that kind of depth, and you got to recruit solid players to get the opportunity to get in the field in the NCAA. And young players who are coming out of high school nowadays are further developed than they were in the old days, and so you'll get freshmen that will come in and make an impact in all sports, it's, and especially in soccer, which is such a worldwide game. Yeah, there's a lot more opportunities to play now outside of uh, high school with club and stuff like that. So it just it helps develop players, which is really nice because the quality of soccer goes up with that. Asson doing a nice job, 15, forcing the action for the Athenas. You know, we were hoping that uh, Athena Manthuli would be in the, in the goal tonight for the Athenas. She yeah. started about half their matches, and we would have had Athena in the goal for the Athenas. I thought that would have been pretty appropriate. <laughs> pretty funny name. Like, just all kind of ties in very well, I guess. I don't think there's any accident that she ended up at Claremont Mud Scripps, which is obviously a great school to attend anyway. Comes Natalie Clark with the ball. Plays it out wide. You see getting back defensively are the Athenas. 
Each side so quick to react to challenges. Williamson wide on the right side. Gets a good cross off. Natalie Clark almost able to get a foot on that yeah, one. Yeah, you want to get it to her. Williamson looking for Natalie Clark, the forward, who's another freshman. And Clark has nine goals, 47 shots this year. Four game winners. Forced to be reckoned with. Yeah. You want to make sure you know where she's at, at all times because if you slip up once, it could be the game. Robertson from the corner. She's had three or four of these already in the first half. And she executes well. Headed out again by CMS. This is dangerous. Shot just off the missed. post. Hit off the, the post. post, the left post. Guess who? Natalie Clark. <laughs> yep. Natalie had an opportunity and didn't miss by a whole lot, did she? Natalie Clark. Right there with the yeah. shot that could have given her team the lead. Some forwards just have a knack and nose for goal, and it's special to watch. Well, she's a young lady that's she was in the right place at the right time. Put it in the goal 18 times over the last two years. It's great work. Nine goals in her senior year in high school and nine goals this year. Natalie Clark, very dangerous for Emory. Six twenty-five to play before intermission. One-one draw. Holman chasing the ball. She's able to win it actually. Holman did win it. Tried to cross it. It's a good hustle right there. Of course, the winner of this match will get Cal Luther tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Eagles, I'm sure their coaching staff is looking on, feverishly taking notes, right? Yeah, to say the least. I mean, the amount of film that teams watch is just, it's kind of crazy. But it helps you prepare for a match and be ready so you're not surprised by what you see on the field when it happens. Well, whoever the Eagles play, it's going to be a challenge. These are two outstanding defensive teams. Here's an opportunity, sent into the air and played. Pratt with a nice performance there. Durancic had an opportunity. And now the punt from Pratt. Robertson again, 23, doing a beautiful job on defense for the Emory Eagles. I'm feeling the defenses are taking over the match. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yep. First is the forwards, but defense started stepping it up after yeah, the goals. They really are. Stella Call, who's a defender, another freshman, has a goal this year. Number 31 for the Athenas. Got to be exciting for a young player like that to come off the bench and get an opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament. Look at all the space she has. Dribbling at the back line at the center back. She's got help out wide on the left side. There's a chance. Ooh, she that had one sent too high and over the cage. Good opportunity for Oberlag out of Denver, Colorado. She has two goals this year and was not that far off from getting her third. She actually had Vita Hansen on the left side wide open. And she could add another touching shot for a goal, but decided to take it herself. Not a bad decision, but, you know, there's always help. Now to 340 left. In the opening half, one goal apiece. CMS got the first one, and Emory got the equalizer a few minutes later. Trying to run it down was no 
Number 18, Ariel Williamson. See how quickly they throw it in, try to get anything, their offense quickly. One thing I've noticed is not really Carr is just towering over the center backs for Claremont. And right here, she looks to be the, one of the taller people on Emory that's in the box. So if they could find her in the air, she could get a nice, easy shot on goal. See if Robertson tries to get it to her. Instead, it was Hilsey that was the closest to the ball for Emory. Went right past three Eagles. Oof. Clock is a factor here. We're down to two and a half minutes remaining. In the opening 45. Second half figures to be highly entertaining and very suspenseful on which team will get to the second round of the tournament. The Hilsey 24 for Emory always looking to steal the ball. Yeah, you got to be stout defensively. Yeah, that's probably what the coaching staff states week in and week out wants from their players. Sue Pat Berg, again in her 26th year, 10 NCAA appearances in the last 15 years for Emory, so they're used to being here. Run it down as Williamson couldn't quite get there. Sealing her off nicely was Dresner. Clock is running. We're approaching a minute to play. Opening half. 1-1 one, one draw. Don't want to give a one here away if you're either team. You want to don't want to lose that momentum going into the locker room. There's a breakout. This would be four on four right now. Let's see if she can get a shot off. Blocked out in front. It's a dangerous rolling ball. Still alive. Oh, it was a great shot. shot. Off the oh, that ball. hit the post. Oh, that was so close for Durancic. That was a great shot. Looked to be going top corner on the right side, but. A little unfortunate for it to hit the crossbar. So in the final half minute, Durancic came that close to they, giving the Athenas the lead. Can't fall asleep because they might take it quick here. There's only 15, around 15 seconds left. From the corner, got to be careful if you're Emery. We call goal kick. We'll probably be done for the rest of the half. Yeah, that should do it. See that they're counting it down on the public address. There it is. We're going to go to the break. Tied at one apiece. Number one there, Pratt did her job. So each side scored early. And after that, not much. Not much. <laughs> well, we're going to take a breather. We're going to let you at home relax and enjoy our halftime presented by our crew. We'll be back in a few minutes for the second half, which is vital. Who will play Cal Lutheran tomorrow night? Will it be CMS or will it be Emory? We'll have that for you in a few minutes, the second half. Enjoy. Well, this should be entertaining in the next 45 minutes. A 1-1 draw for CMS and Emery. I'm Randy. You know this guy by now. Doesn't he look like Antonio Banderas? <laughs> Instead, it's... What's your first name? Antonio. Just like Banderas. That's why he got the name. Except it's Antonio Welch. All right, let's break it down. We, we saw goals early. I'm looking here. We had Sarah Tocher score early, two minutes and 12 seconds into the match. Tocher uh, was able to score her second goal of the year for Claremont Mud Scripps. But just three minutes later, Lindsey Bresco got one back for Emery. That's her third goal of the year, and we're even at one apiece. Yeah, that really kind of settled the tone. Uh, after both teams got the goal, they kind of both settled down and were able to find some play. And they had some good spurts offensively as well. It's, uh, defensively, they both held their own. And it's we'll see how they come out in the second half. Really, you get the sense now that we're in a position with the equality of these two teams. Yeah. Do you not believe this, Antonio? Mm -hmm. 
that the next goal could be the winning goal. Yep. It's It could be decisive, and it's very important that whichever side um, gets the first goal first, that they hold it. Because, like we saw, there can be a quick response, and if there is, we're in for a long night. It could be in for overtime. You know, it's interesting, too. Here, You know, a lot of times you'll, you'll build impressions in your mind. You'll, you'll go into a break like this, and we'll say, well, this team's more powerful than this team. A is better than B. This side's got the advantage. We don't know. Off of what we've seen through the first 45, they look pretty close. It's pretty even, to say the least. I mean, both sides are both really good defensively and have the potential to go forward. All right, let's take it back to the field. They're about to commence the final 45 minutes. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. We just don't know. We could have some overtime, maybe even penalty kicks before this one's decided. Going late into the night in Thousand Oaks, California. It's a really good look at young lady number five, Natalie Clark. Perhaps she could be a hero tonight. She's got talent. She's scored this year in droves for Emory, which is attacking. Caroline Moore had it for a moment. Now CMS will control. Out of bounds, throw for Emory. Moore again to throw it in. Williamson, Williamson. on the run. Well, that's dangerous. That's Clark. Natalie Clark was the target, number five. Get the fortunate call off a corner. Yep. It's pretty close. Couldn't really tell. Might look to play short here. See what Williamson does with that corner. Instead, they just elect to set it up. The wall gets up nicely from CMS. That's good defense. And allowing Emery to get a shot on goal. Bell working hard for Emery. That's a good cross. Ooh, and a knockdown. Natalie Clark right there looking to get her 10th goal of the season. Had a chance. Just missed, though. Emery's come out with some energy here to begin the second half. You can tell they're both trying to pounce and try to see if they can get the first goal, see if Claremont can string some passes forward. We get uh, one good look. Boy, the ball doesn't stay with one player very long, does it? No, it's back and forth. If they're not stringing passes together, it's getting intercepted because both teams defensively are anticipating each other's passes. Yeah, You've got to appreciate the aggressiveness of each side defensively. You can't stick the ball. You have to move it. It sticks with one player. They're going to have a, a lockdown performer on them. Hey, this solo effort. Here's a chance. Oh, what a save by Pratt. Rolling to the ground and making a spectacular play. Well, for the moment, Pratt has kept this match at one apiece. That might have been the save of the night. So far, probably, yeah. That was a good solo effort on Claremont's side. Couldn't see what number she was, but she was able to drill past two or three people and get a good, decent shot off. Just when you think Emery came out with the energy, CMS has picked up the tempo. They got help on the left side, wide open. She's got about a good Looking 10 yards for space. Klaus. It's a pretty good idea to find Gabby. She's got five goals. Gabby Klaus, 5'3", senior. Out of Santa Monica High School. It's going to be tossed in. Another throw for Claremont. How much thinking goes on out there? Are you aware of the score, or are you just playing hard and trying to do your role? I think the score plays more of a role if you're losing. Uh, right now, it's kind of 0-0. Zero, zero. You don't want to give up another goal because then you have to play from behind. So you're defensive-minded now. You want to stop your opponent. In a sense, you're more offensive okay. because if you can get that goal, 
it's a little bit of a breather. But I mean, defensively, you you got to be stout because if you're not, it, it'll cost you. Well, both teams have been stout, given why those goals came early. The last goal we had score came five minutes and 23 seconds into the match. So we've gone 45 minutes with neither side able to score. Claremont Mud Scripps would like to change that script. <laughs> Go or play. That's some good play on that right side. They're doing some passing and they found a switch, but unable to get anything out of it. Still well worked though. Wind starting to kick up again here at William Rowland Stadium. It had ceased for a while. Again, the temperature is dipping down. It was near 70. It was in the upper 60s when it commenced. But it's dropped probably 8 or 9 degrees Holman throughout did. the evening. Holman Ooh, tried there's quite a collision. Holman tried to switch the field, but she played a bad ball. It's number 18 of their team, which is Williamson, who got fouled and ultimately will get a free kick for the Eagles. Holman, number 7 for CMS. A Fitzgerald on the right side. And she's got help up the line. She couldn't see it, though. Inside of 40 minutes to play. We've got five more minutes here with both teams showing good defense. That one's uh, conveniently into Cam Hampson. That was a good read by Fitzgerald. She came out about 10 yards behind the Claremont player and was able to steal it. We said coming in, we thought that goals would be at a premium, and then they came out on each side, scored so quickly, we thought, well, wait a minute, there's some fireworks here. And now they've settled into their respective roles, and this is what they do best, play great defense. Yeah, it's pretty evident. And here comes on the right side, Emery, number 26. That's Beal. Well, we'll have the throw in. Let's see if they can capitalize. Beal again. Yeah, the Bell's very clever, very quick. Bell. It's a good cross. Yeah, it was, but it was headed out of there. No one's really in there to get ahead on it, though. Still keep it in, though. They hold it in for the moment. Now it's taken away by the Athenas. They did a nice job of clearing it up, but they could not get that counterattack going. Marie's done a very good job of changing the point of attack. Trying to get attack on both sides, and right now they're on the right flank, trying to get a cross off. And right. the keeper holds it right, pretty right well. in there. Easy to play. Cam Hampson. Yeah, this is easy at a field of a, a play for Cam, as she'll get it any time this year. That was so convenient. Right in her lap. Yep. Ooh. She got through two players. LJ Collage. Trying to find Bell on the far side. Missed her. Of course, uh, for Emery, starting to get pretty late in the night, Eastern time. Uh, body clock, they're from Atlanta. Yeah, I wonder if that plays a big role or not. I mean, I can't it, really speak it to It could. That. I think they came out, though, a day earlier just to acclimate. Certainly hasn't hurt them. I mean, they look pretty good. Here's a chance, but not quite coming out to get it. It's Pratt. She did well to come off the line on that one. There you go again. One two touch passing. Yep. Kind of unlocked their their play from the back, and there they are go going forward now. Collage. Williamson. Williamson. Good for first time cross. Klar, unable to get to it. Yep. 
for a moment there. I thought they were having a shot on goal, but they were unable to get one. They're getting good crosses off. They're just not able to get ahead on it. But, I mean, it's been bouncing around in the 18. And maybe, you know, they get lucky one time and they might be able to finish off with that. Thirty-five, forty-five to play in regulation. Again, the clock at the college level is official. It'll be tossed in by Sophia Dresner. It's a good switch of the field right there. Klaus. Klaus is dangerous, number 25. Beautifully run off the ball by Caroline Moore of Emory. It's a bit bigger than her, but she had some help. It was a two-on-one. Klaus wasn't able to get through. These ladies are feisty right now. They're playing defense. Yeah, both sides really want to win, and you can tell in the way they play. See, everybody's getting a body into an offensive player on defense on each side. Was stolen very well in the middle. Hassan lost it. There's a chance. Oh, offsides. Yep, they're offsides. Good call there. You were on that one. Tocher was coming in. She already has one goal, but got there a little bit prematurely. It looked to be good, but as soon as the, the lineman put up his, his flag, it was called by the, the ref. Pratt with the wind behind her back. That'll help with the kicks. Yeah, it does. Nearly kept it in. Yeah, that was a good effort by Holman. Couldn't quite control it. Emory's got some subs coming in. Talk about what's legal in terms of substitution at the collegiate level. So in the first half, the um, once you're subbed off, 10, you're Caroline not able to Kulski. come back on. But in the second half, it's free 30, substitution. Aubrey so you're able to come off and come back on. So right now, I think they're taking off, in particular, Natalie Clark to get her a little breather. And then so she can come back a little bit um, with some legs under her and she'll get some she'll have some more, you know, breath. Still thirty minutes to be played, so at least. Mm -hmm. Mind the next one could be the decisive one. This touching by Claremont is something nice to watch. Yeah, it really is. They're moving it now. They're skilled. There's no question about it. And the team that they could be playing tomorrow night, they've defeated once already in Cal Lutheran. Claremont beat them once and tied them the other time. Ran out of a little energy there. No, Good Emory. effort, though, by Dresner. Emory's got a chance for a counterattack. One-on-one really on one in the back. She's got help on the far left side. She's got number 30 coming in. That's Blanchard. She's got help on the top of the 18 if she sees her. Wasn't able to get to her. Well defended by the, the Athenas. Ooh, it's a shot from Collage over the cage. A little too floated, but that looked good for a second. Really did. It's another one of those freshmen. So Collage... A good Eagles, boot, but a little bit too much. Another sub for Emery. Coming in is number 25, Kylie Hall. I think on that goal kick, the wind might have played a little bit of a factor because she wasn't able to get it up very high. It didn't really get past the 35. And the fact that the wind is picked up, its change can be it's going against somewhat her. alarming, too. They didn't have that problem in the first half. Yeah, it's always hard uh, going against the wind. Here's CMS with a chance. Klaus maneuvering. Oof. That was a great idea. She tried to lay it off to the runner coming in behind her. But the touch was a little bit too much. Now a counter.
the Kolsky. Eagles can Kolsky might get want the to play off at the other end. Is yeah, your Kolsky is a good player. Five goals, three assists this year. Sixty-seven shots on goal. One of the top options for Emory College. A little under thirty-one minutes now. Every second that ticks by is crucial. Now you got to start thinking about the clock pretty soon. It's you get down to like four or five minutes left. It's almost like sudden death, although it really isn't because you'll have another opportunity. But then you know that one goal could be the big difference. Yeah, and for either of these sides, I don't think they really want to go into overtime because that's a lot more tread on the, the tires, and it'll get some people a little more tired and shorter of a break for tomorrow's game. Well, you know who wants him to go into overtime? It's Cal Lutheran. <laughs> yeah. Cal Lutheran would like him going to penalty kicks and go for a while there. <laughs> they want, uh, you're right, they want the legs taken out of either side, which is left over to play them tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And with the amount of energy that they both came out with, that's probably best if the Regals get a little bit of a break with that. One good save. Set and blocked. By Cam Hampson. Yeah, she did a, a nice save. job there. Yeah, it was a good shot. Again, it was Bresco that put it on goal. She's still come out to play. It's still Emery Ball. She's come out to play today. She's almost had, she could have had a hat trick with that one. But, well, she only has one goal, but she had two other clear opportunities that could have resulted in goals as well. Yeah, she's had one goal, one great opportunity that nearly scored for her. Here's Kylie Hall from the corner. It's a left footed in swinger. Can't make a mistake if you're handling the ball for CMS there. Another chance for the Eagles to put it in and put it on goal. Jordan Fitzgerald, the junior, brings it in. Let's see what they can do here. Can they organize? Sides. He's offsides. Yep, offsides. You got it. You're quick on those flags, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. As a keeper, you kind of look for him sometimes when you need some help. Kind of bright, too, so they're hard to miss. Cam Hampson. Emery again pushing forward, looking for a goal. She's got numbers on the left side. Try to take on everyone, but... She had 15 and 22. Yeah, Blanchard forcing the action. Aubrey Blanchard. She has four goals and excellent on the wing. In her last match against Rochester, she scored a goal. Aubrey Blanchard. Two substitutions coming in. Or CMS. Keep those bodies fresh. Overlags checked in. Number 10. Duranzik. 13. Yeah, Duranzik is uh, the lady that saw a lot of time on the field in the first half. Back to the goalie. How dangerous is that? You know, it's not as dangerous as you think it is. And actually, it's good because when you play the ball back to the keeper, you're, you're enabling yourself, your team, to maintain possession which is crucial because if you just clear it, it's a 50-50 ball. And if Claremont wants to win the 50-50 ball, they're right at goal. So key, playing the ball back to the keeper isn't as dangerous as most people think it is. It can actually be beneficial in keeping possession. Granted, the keeper does have to be careful with what <laughs> decision they make. Just got help in the middle. you got to have good vision, I would imagine, knowing who's around you and yeah. how open it is to get it back to your keeper. Composure from the keeper yeah. is very important. Because I'm talking about who, whoever sends it back to the keeper. Yeah, well, look at this. The decision. Got to be careful. Oh, penalty. That could be a penalty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here we're going to have a penalty kick. Well, here's a chance to break the deadlock. That happened earlier as well in the Cal Lutheran game against U.S. Uh, UCSC. Yeah. Stewart got a free one and drilled it. Made it a 4-1 match at the time. 
So here's a chance for CMS. I told you. Might get her second today. Yeah, she might. She's the senior from Seattle, Washington. Been in that lineup for four years. One-on-one with Pratt. Well, that's a great look at it, isn't it? Tocher. Oh, what a save. Oh, what a save by Pratt. Oh. But the return is in. That's really demoralizing as a keeper. You make a great save like that, but the defense isn't able to have your back. It's unfortunate. It was a great save by Haley Pratt. Take another look at that. Hard to tell who knocked it in. Yeah. But it's 2-1 to one for CMS with 26.43 left on a rebound. Yeah. If that had gone out of bounds, it would be a different game. But here we are, 2-1. Goals at a premium. So we'll see how if Emery can answer really quick like they did well, earlier they did in the, the first last half. Time, yeah. have to do it again. So now Emery's going to have to pressure. One thing to note, too. Claremont has actually given up a number of goals in the 80 plus minute. So keep an eye out for once it hits about around 10 minutes. I believe Oberlag was credited with the goal, if I heard that correctly, over the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, a, it was a really good first time finish because she had to play it first time. There was defenders on her back, and if Haley Pratt would have got up, she might have saved that one. It was really close, though. Well, you can't fault Pratt her first save on Tocher was spectacular. But when you're off your feet like that, you're exposed. Mm -hmm. and she had the goal wide open, so realistically she did well to slot it back home. So will we have a Skyak rematch? Two teams very familiar with one another. If Claremont Scribs can hold off Emery, and we don't know that they will. Emery's still a very talented team. Here's Hall. That's a nice job of marking Hall there. There's that young lady. You can see the fight. Oh, cocky. Huh? You can see the fight in Emery. They really need, they're trying to get that goal quick. Got to be careful, though. If you push in like that, you can expose yourself to the back. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been a really good match. It's been hard fought. Yeah. Kind of match. It might take your toll out of you for tomorrow, but. On the other hand, whoever wins, it's going to have a little bit of momentum at the end of the night, thinking about, hey, we're one match away from the Sweet 16. Again, Emery went all the way to the finals before. Became the national runner-up. But uh, they're in trouble here, down a goal with under 25 minutes to play. Oof. There's a chance out in front, and it's cleared. Doing a nice job was Ostrom. CMS getting really that close. left foot out there to kick it away. That yeah, was pretty close. Had me scared for a second. You don't have anything to be nervous about. <laughs> I know, but I don't know. As a keeper, I kind of root for the keepers okay. a little bit. On either side. Yeah, yeah. Because it hurts to concede. Been there, done that. Well, Bell's in, 26. Look for them to play short, too. It's two on one. They might do it. It's a nice job putting it in there. There's the header, and it's just one. Good job by Bell, though, on that corner to mm -hmm. give her teammate an opportunity. Very well placed. The wind's Hampson's had a nice match in there, hasn't she, this keeper? Yeah, the wind's died down a little bit, so we'll see if she can get a little bit further this time. She hasn't really got it past 40 in this half. She is kicking into whatever breeze we have, though. Robertson back in, very effective player. Able to move up from the back line and do some damage for Emery, but right now it's CMS controlling. All done. It's Fitzgerald again. Yep. Trying to force the action of the Eagles. There's Robertson. This is the young lady that's so talented. She'll set it up for her teammates. It's a good ball. pass. Yeah. 
Landing Kolsky. Tough to thread the needle against either one of these sides. So a penalty kick rebound is the difference in the game. See that Emery now is trying to force the action. Oh, you can get beat at the other end, though. Gotta be careful there. Emery able to get back. Blanchard. She does well to get past that defender. Blanchard sending it in. Looked to hit her face, but everyone was asking for a handball. No handball called. Go Lodge missed it wide right. Substitution for Claremont. Now Holman is caught on. Holman gives him some firepower. Another goal would put CMS into a commanding position, and they know it. Just a touch over 20 minutes to play. William Rowland Stadium, Thousand Oaks, California, the site for the Division Three NCAA Tournament. With Antonio Welch, I'm Randy Rosamond. Glad you're with us. Earlier we had Cal Lutheran. We're very well anticipated by number 10, Claremont. Over Santa Cruz, 4-1. to one. Looking for that one goal that would really put it away. 2-1 lead for the Athenas. Be think. careful with the ball rolling down the other end, but it's easy for Hampson. I think Emory needs to settle down a little bit more. They looked a little bit rushed since they got scored on. Trying well, to they're, answer. They're nervous and they know that you know their season's on the line. Yeah, they're trying to answer, but they need to be careful and pick and choose when to go forward because if they just keep going forward, they'll get exposed in the back. It'd be a great night for the Skyac Conference if they get both their teams through to the second round of the tournament. Pomona Pitzer, obviously, in the tournament is a very good squad. Great side. Best team from the conference this year. Ranked eighth in the nation, right? Yeah, they're in the top ten. Number eight right now. They've been as high as number seven. We're inside of 20 minutes to play. Blanchard on the wing. Doing some dancing. She's trying to cut back and give herself some space to get a cross off. Eric Cocky is a sensational defender, number five for CMS. And she's the one I called the pest in the first <laughs> half. <laughs> yeah, when you're going against her. And when you have when you have her on a team like Claremont does, it's it's a really good commodity to have. I don't love her quickness out there. She really gets to the ball in a hurry. The ball hasn't really settled very much lately. Let's see what happened right here. Playing the long ball, trying to get down to the other side of the field, knowing they're a goal back. Looks for Blanchard. That was a beautiful job defensively by Caroline Moore of Emory. Now CMS on the attack, and they'll set it up at midfield. That was the right idea. To the far side for Ostrom. And scooped up easily. Another easy one for Pratt. I think she's played a stellar game in, in goal tonight. Unfortunate off the rebound, off the penalty, but, I mean, that's how the game is sometimes. It's crucial. It's, it's, it's hard on you. Life is not fair, <laughs> is it? <laughs> no, no, no. 18 minutes left, and we'll keep our eye on the clock. Definite ally right now of CMS, but you can't feel too comfortable if you're an Athena fan. Just a one goal lead right now. I 
miss hit. Two miss hits. See what they could do here. Blanchard. She likes that spot on the field, but blocked away beautifully. That was a nice defensive effort by Oberlag. Sub coming in for Emery. Starting to wonder now when they're going to put in Natalie Clark again, their leading goal scorer. There she has nine on the year. Got to be thinking we've got to get her out there. Mm -hmm. This is Dresner, Lily Dresner. They don't have the luxury of a long throw like the Regals did with Matty Grease, but it's still getting in there deep into the 18. Boy, that area around the 18 is certainly compacted. Yeah. A lot of bodies there from CMS. And Emery on that occasion. And Claremont Mud Scripps just looking to counter, looking to block shots. Not allow any dangerous shots on goal against Hampson. And then go back the other way. Yeah, Emery's best chance right now, I think, would have to come on a counterattack when they catch Claremont Mud Scripps off, or the Athenas off of um their defensive shape because right now they're really compact and they're doing very well to hold their line. A little over 15 minutes left. Still plenty of time to get one. I think Haley Pratt looked to save that one but ultimately decided to leave it. Or might have been out already. Fifteen is Hassan. Vita Hassan. Vita Hassan, I'm sorry. Looked at it. It's like the old baseball pitcher. It's spelled like Vita, like Vita Blue, mm -hmm. but it is pronounced Vita. Right now, Claremont's 11. The clock is just ticking down. Oh, yeah. Somewhat disappointed for the young ladies from Emory if they would fall here tonight. Again, they're on a six-match winning streak. Terrific 13-4 and four record. Be a long flight home to the East Coast. Sure would be. That's a ball. There's Pratt again easily coming out to get it. Well, Mud Scripps forcing the action here, doing a nice job. They keep looking to play Blanchard, but the right side of the defense for the Athena is doing really well to stop her and not allow her any space. Fitzgerald with a good stop defensively. Plays it forward, but unable to find anyone. I like the way Claremont Mud Scripps is performing, but uh, again, one miscue, and life can change quickly here. They come on a counter, but it's blocked back. It's tough for either side to get going offensively, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Blanchard. It's just a testament to both defenses. I do like number 30 in white, Aubrey Blanchard, freshman, who's got four goals this year. She's been really active in this half. Really has, trying to give her team an opportunity to tie it. See if the Eagles can do something off the corner with Peyton Robertson. Looks like 15 is coming off for Emery. It's Lindsey Bresco who has their goal. Coming on, can't see your number right now, but. You got better eyes than me, let me tell you. <laughs> well, you see the switch, so it's not going to be Robertson. They're going to make a change here. Number 18, Williamson, is actually taking it. She just came on. So it's Ariel Williamson that's brought in to take the corner. And then that went in there, and it's headed out. 
kept in by the Eagles. Ooh, they still Good have hustle. possession. I think she slipped on the ball on that one. Twelve and a half minutes to play. Keep it on the backside. Oh, Lord. Pretty strong leg there. Yeah. Clock is running with 12.20 to play. Hampson with that short haircut. And some calisthenics and eating up some time. Mm -hmm. Just trying to keep limber again. It's cooled off. We're in the high 50s right now. As a keeper, I love the situation. Kind of just melting down the clock. Personally, I would have took it to the side of the 18 just to kill some more time. But there's a sub going on, so wouldn't have really mattered much. At what point does the referee start to look at you ominously? I think inside of 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then once the other side starts complaining about it, it becomes a little bit more evident. But normally the refs are pretty pretty reasonable with the time. Cole Lodge getting the ball back for Emery. Here's a chance. He's got help on the right side. Hilsey trying to Ooh. find a help on the near side and nearly got the goal. That was close. Yeah. Hilsey did a nice job of finding the ball and centering it. And they'll have another corner. One of the Athenas got a head on it, and good thing, too, because there was someone coming in crashing on the backside that could have got a wide-open header. Here's Williamson again. Remember, she was designated for the corner. Brought her in. This is her specialty. Let's see what she can do. Great job. Headed up over the goal. Called a foul on the keeper. But you can see right now, uh, Emery only has one player back. They're throwing all numbers forward, trying to get that second goal, tie it up see if they can go to overtime or even win it late. And I mentioned earlier, Claremont gives up quite a bit of goals towards the end of the of the uh, second half, last 10 minutes roughly. So we'll see if they can hold their own right here. What do you think causes that? You know, sometimes it could be fatigue or just a, a mental lapse. And it happens to even the best of teams. Like, there's no, there's no really reason or rhyme as to why it happens. It's just... Sometimes the fatigue just kicks in, you know. Brad scoops it up, and you'll see Emery move forward. They have to get going. On a goal, under 10 minutes to play. Ball's not sticking with anyone right now. Both sides are just fighting. Claremont. Mud Scripps trying to break out. Clock very much an ally of the team from Southern California, CMS. In some instances, you can actually look at the clock as an enemy for both sides. You kind of want it to melt down if you're the, the Athenas, but... Bell with a nice run. Here's a chance. Shot and a save. Cam was there. Cam Hampson. Cool comment collected was Cam Hansen. We weren't sure she was going to start. It was obviously a very good choice. Mm -hmm. Played a terrific game. Yeah, both keepers have. Jennifer Clark had a decision to make and uh, made the right one. Once again, we thought it could have been Athena Manthuli. Ball cleared forward. Go out for a throw in for Claremont. You look at Arakaki again. She's been all over the field tonight. And here she is, Natalie Clark coming in for Emery. Pretty good time to bring her in. Just above eight minutes to go. Make sure she's got all their energy. She sat out most of that half. I think she was only in for like the first 10, 15 minutes. She should be firing on all cylinders. Yep. Andy Rosenblum with Antonio Welch. We're inside of eight minutes to go in this first round of the NCAA tournament. Claremont Mud Scripps with a 2-1 scant lead. Trying to hold on and advance Cal to play Cal Lutheran here tomorrow night. In the round of 32. And 
and both sides have maintained the maintained the energy from the first half, which is it's really nice to see. Fun to watch. It's made it hard for both sides to actually play though. Emery desperately wants that ball back. But an opportunity for CMS stalled as they got to the 45 yard line on this beautiful football field. Feel you off the body of Arakaki again. She seems to be everywhere defensively for Here comes CMS. Natalie Clark. You're wrong. thinking that Clark is going to get the shot on goal at some point, aren't you? I do. She's number five in white. She's had a good chance earlier in the first half that hit the post, but it was just a tad bit off. And they're looking for Clark. It's over her head. Trying to post up was Kolsky. Dresner. There's no one really in the middle when they played that ball, but. The urgency is there for Emery. Just the execution isn't, hasn't quite been there. Closing in on six minutes remaining. That's how close the Athenas are from advancing in the NCAA tournament. And how little time Emery has, on the other hand, to tie it up and extend their season possibly another 10, maybe 20 minutes if they go to double overtime. You're right, they're really pushing forward, Emery. Trying desperately to tie this match. See how quickly they brought it back in with Collage, not wasting any time on the sideline. Every second, as you noted earlier, is precious. That's a good, that's a big hit. Surprised they didn't call a foul there. Well, the officials touch. don't want to decide it at this point. They want the players to play. Mm -hmm. I just looked at number 30 for Emery Blanchard. Got to it before the other, uh, before the Athenas did, and she might have got a little bit of her ankle, but rough lets it play. She's been pretty consistent today, so. See that Oberlag is back on. We believe it was Oberlag that scored on that rebound goal. That's the difference in this game. It was 1-1 at the break. And Cam Hampson will make sure there's no opportunity there for Emery. Four and a half minutes to play a, a and big, a knockdown. It's another big hit. There's Cam again, sliding to make the save. That looked like it hurt. She's aggressive out there. Mm -hmm. Wants to take control at all times. She's coming off well off her line. She did that earlier a few times in the first half as well. She's coming off an injury. She has four shutouts this year. She won't get one of those tonight. Trying to improve her personal record to eight and two this year. That's a good cutback. There you go. <laughs> well, they rolled out. Kill some more time. Every little trick in the book. Mm -hmm. And now she's letting someone else take it. Down to 3.30 remaining. The kick comes from Gracie Pratt. Let's see if she can get a pass half. Same result. Well, now if you're Emery, you, you are peeking at the clock. You know you're down, closing in on three minutes to play. Trying to win the ball and you got help tie on the, the right match. Side. Fitzgerald's got number 30, Blanchard on the right side. Exactly three minutes remaining. Fitzgerald does well to keep the ball in play. Good hustle. Back to the midfield area. Emery's controlling the ball, but they can't get a clean look. 
and see what CMS's mindset is now to keep it out of there. Maybe get the counter. Here is a good look. Number four, to Toucher. Yeah. She has a goal tonight. She had the first one of the evening. 2.20 with that clock running. Claremont Mud Scripps. Here you go again. Wasting a little bit of time. Telling yep. someone else behind you to throw the ball. Again, CMS who didn't know that they would be in this tournament. Had a week off. They're definitely making the most of it. Certainly are. And here you are. Knocked down. Going down was Gabby Klaus. She went down a little easy trying to get, you know, a foul called and maybe some time off the clock. Yep. Minute 45 remaining. And if I'm Claremont, I'm in no rush to take this. Might try to get a corner here and melt some more, more time. Emory has 90 seconds. That's all that's left. William Rowland Stadium. On a Saturday night in Southern California. Well, here might be the last chance for the Eagles. Emory needs to hurry. Seventy seconds left. Bell. That's on goal. Right here. That's dangerous, Ooh. but Cam came out to get it. Cam Hampson anticipating well. Yeah. Way to come out because it's not Natalie Clark was right there. That was on target, wasn't it? Fifty seconds left. Blanchard fighting for the ball. But they're pointing CMS direction, and now it's really difficult because they can milk it down. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds remaining. And Luke Clark flicks it. She is again. 20 seconds. Hampson has it. And it looks they to be should be in. Yeah, looks to be sealed now. Kicking it as high as she can to eat clock. Five seconds remain. It's going to be impossible. Yeah, that's game. The Athenas are going to advance. They'll celebrate an explosion off their sideline. Yep. And Claremont Mud Scripps, you can see the enthusiasm there yeah, with they... a hard-earned 2-1 victory. Yeah, it Here was tonight. Not, that was a good match, wasn't it? It was not easy by any means. They showed a lot of grit defensively and offensively to come out with that one. Well, a little bit of luck off the penalty, but yeah. nonetheless, it was a good effort. Yeah, well, the penalty kick, you know, you, know, you can't give away penalties, you know. Mm. Yeah. You know, the percentage of scoring is very high for the for the shooter, obviously. And it's got to be a devastating loss for Emory. They conclude their season. 13 and 5, and they have their six match winning streak snapped. Snap. And the 11th win of the year goes to CMS. Again, they weren't going to be in the tournament. They weren't invited to the Skyac tournament, but yet their overall power rating got them into the NCAA. And like you said, they took full advantage. All right, Antonio, before we say goodnight for now, and again, we'll be back tomorrow at 7 o'clock with the championship decider to get to the Sweet 16. How do you map it out? with Cal Lutheran and Claremont Mud Scripps. We know they've met before. We know that CMS is 1-0-1, so they've had the edge over the Regals. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're the Regals, you're hoping the third time's the charm. Right. <laughs> Easily You've said. been waiting for that all night, right? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> but, yeah, now that they come up top, it's the, the Regals know what they're going against. They've played them twice now, so they understand their style of play. Um, but it's a counter, too, because they – Claremont knows how you Pretty play good, as yeah. well, and they have the upper hand so and far. And they're confident, mm -hmm. they're confident because they know they've beaten them. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. not like it's a huge and realistically, advantage. You know? Realistically, they have nothing to lose. They're going to come out here, play their hearts out, and they're going to try to upset the Regals here at home because um, they'll be visiting tomorrow. But it it's set to be a good matchup. I'm excited for that one. You know, coming in, I, I think they threw all caution to the wind, and they felt like they didn't have anything to lose. But now after you win a match... You get your feet wet. Mm -hmm. They have something to lose. They want to expand their season. They want to go to the 
the in, Sweet 16. Much like the March Madness tournament sure. that basketball has. A lot of the, the smaller teams or teams that you know th- no one thought would really make it far kind of make some runs. So, yeah. I mean, we'll see how, how well Claremont does tomorrow. And hopefully, I mean, this, it turns out to be a good game. You know what, Antonio? Hmm. This was so much fun. Let's try it again tomorrow, huh? I'm with it. I'm okay. with it. You'll be here at 7 o'clock? I'll be here at you 6. You will be, huh? I'll be here at 6. Maybe even 5.30. Okay. All right, it's uh, a Skyac rematch for uh, an opportunity to go to the Sweet 16 here in the NCAA at Cal Lutheran. It's CLU, the host school tomorrow against CMS. Some familiar faces will be battling one another. We want to give our crew a little bit of a break. They worked a football game with Cal Lutheran winning earlier today against Whittier and two very fine soccer matches. Cal Lutheran CMS tomorrow night right here. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody.